Welcome to Istanbul, where ancient history meets vibrant culture, and every corner holds a story waiting to be explored. First up, the Grand Bazaar, one of the oldest and largest covered markets in the world. Lose yourself in its maze of narrow alleys filled with treasures from every corner of Turkey. Step into the footsteps of sultans and explore the opulent halls of the Topkapi Palace once the residence of Ottoman rulers. Marvel at its exquisite architecture and immerse yourself in centuries of royal legacy. Next, indulge your senses at the Spice Bazaar, where aromatic scents and vibrant colors beckon you to, dis to discover the flavors of Turkey. From exotic spices to traditional sweets, every corner offers a tantalizing experience. In Istanbul, Craftsmanship is an art form passed down through generations. Stop by a local shoe repair shop and witness the skillful hands of artisans as they breathe new life into your favorite footwear. No visit to Istanbul is complete without experiencing a Turkish haircut and shave. Set back, relax, and let skilled barbers pamper you with a traditional grooming ritual that dates back centuries. From ancient landmarks to timeless traditions, Istanbul offers a journey like no other. Come, explore the magic of this enchanting city and create memories that will last a lifetime. Okay, so we're going to go through the Grand Bazaar, the oldest indoor covered shopping area in the world. People have been shopping here since the 1400s, so over 500 years. It's hectic, it's going to be loud, a lot of people pushing. So hang on, we're going to have an exciting shopping spree, the Grand Bazaar of Istanbul. So it's really kind of a maze and I don't know how many miles of corridors there are all through here but it kind of snakes around and goes to different areas and you know you could buy almost anything probably that uh, you could ever need here at the Grand Bazaar. It might not be Genuine could be like a knockoff product, but uh, they have a lot of stuff. It's very crowded, so it's about uh, 11 o'clock in the morning now, and um, it opens around nine, I think. So it's pretty quiet when it first opens up, but then as the day goes on, it gets busier and busier. So in a couple hours, it'll be a lot busier than it is now. Real. I don't know. A lot of nice Rolexes. Or are they Bolexes? All right, so we found the exit. We've been walking around for a while in this maze and it's easy to get turned around and kind of lost because there's just so many little turns and ways to go. But uh, we walked around for a while now. We found the exits. We're about to leave the Grand Bazaar oldest shopping mall in the world, I reckon. All right, so we left the um, Grand Bazaar and we're walking out. And then the Grand Bazaar has become in the last, I guess, from what I understand, the last 20 years or so, uh, very touristy. And obviously there's a lot of tourists in there, but this area outside of the bazaar, uh, a lot more locals um, are shopping here and, and a lot fewer tourists. And this is also a place that's easy to get lost in. A lot of uh, different alleyways that, that um, twist and turn. And so you can get lost here, trying to find your way to wherever you want to go. So I don't know what they call this area. It's just like a shopping area, kind of like a Fußgänger zone or so, um, pedestrian zone outside of the uh, Grand Bazaar, but also very hectic. We've got motorcycles and scooters running through here. And uh, yeah, but uh, we're finding our way and we'll be out of here shortly, I'm sure. The top copy palace entrance is through the Imperial Gate, a majestic creation by Sultan Fatih back in 1478. This gate is adorned with verses from the Holy Quran, 
and once displayed alcoves showcasing the heads of troublemakers and wrongdoers. As you step through the gate, you enter a series of four courtyards that gradually unveil more private spaces the further you wander into the complex. The first courtyard stands out as the only section of the palace that was accessible to the public in the Ottoman era, serving as a backdrop for various ceremonies and processions. Remarkably, this area still remains open to visitors without the need for a ticket, preserving its historical significance as an accessible space. Off to the left of the first courtyard, there is the Church of Aya Irene, the ancient church of the Eastern Roman Empire, making it the oldest of its kind. This gem was the second largest church in Istanbul, just behind the Grand Hagia Sophia. Hagia Irene boasts typical Byzantine characteristics in its materials and architecture. Originally constructed in 330 and is the city's only church of the pre-Ottoman era that was never turned into a mosque. You can purchase tickets for the Top Copy Palace online or get them right before entering the palace. And if you want to explore the harem or IS Irene Church, you'll need to purchase separate tickets. It's best to get there at least 30 minutes before it opens because it can be very busy and crowded. Also, remember that the Top Copy Palace is closed on Tuesdays. Upon purchasing your ticket, you step into the Grand Palace as you stroll through the Gate of Salutation, also known as the Middle Gate. Within this space, one can discover opulent courtyards and meticulously curated gardens, intricate mosaics and artworks, luxurious embellishments and assortments, all complemented by breathtaking vistas of the cityscape below. Welcome to the Top Copy Palace Complex. And this is where the Ottoman Empire was ruled for about 500 years. And uh, basically, as soon as they conquered Constantinople in the early 1400s, I think around 1430, um, basically the next day they started working on this palace complex the Sultan did. And so this is where they ruled the Great Ottoman Empire. A very lavish complex. Very beautifully decorated. And this is the Felicity Gate. Or the Gate of Felicity. And basically this separated the palace from kind of a public area, which I'm in right now, to the very private area beyond this gate. And so beyond this gate only the Sultan and his special family and guests. Uh, so you had to have a very high rank or a very important invitation to go beyond this gate. And right inside here was where the Sultan would meet the public. He would, he would, when he met people, he would meet them right on the other side of that gate. He was coronated on the other side of that gate. And his guards, his heavily guarded Janissaries, uh, protected uh, basically the royal family and the palace complex. And over here, I've got some beautiful, very beautiful flowers, very beautiful tulips. And that is the kitchen complex. A lot of, uh, chimneys coming up. The palace kitchens occupy the entire right side of the second courtyard. Their distinctive presence is marked by 20 broad chimneys that command attention from any vantage point within, within the court. This vast culinary operation was managed by a kitchen staff exceeding 800 individuals responsible for catering to the dietary needs of up to 5,000 palace residents. All right, so this is the divan of the Imperial Council Room of the Top Copy Palace. And right in here, in these two rooms, was where the Ottoman Empire was basically ruled for 
500 years. Some of the most important treasures in the Top Copy Palace are on display in these rooms. These include holy relics of the Prophet Muhammad, such as the hair from his beard, a tooth he lost during battle, and his footprints. Other sacred relics associated with other prophets are also exhibited, such as the Staff of Moses, the Sword of David, the tray of Abraham, and the robe of Joseph, as well as the right arm of John the Baptist. The beautiful quarters of the Ottoman Empire, Top Copy Palace. Welcome to the vibrant heart of Istanbul, the Spice Market, also known as the Egyptian Bazaar. This historic marketplace has been enchanting visitors since 1664. Located in the Imanunu district, the Spice Bazaar has been a bustling hub of commerce and culture since it was built. The Spice Bazaar was originally funded by the revenues from Egypt, hence its name. It's one of the largest bazaars in Istanbul, second only to the Grand Bazaar. This market is not just a place to shop, but a feast for the senses. As you step inside, you're greeted by an explosion of colors and scents. The spice market is famous for its vast array of spices, from the fiery red of paprika to the deep yellow of turmeric. Each stall is a feast for the eyes and the nose. Additionally, there are also textiles, some jewelry, ceramics, and souvenirs. The spice bazaar is a bit more authentic and less crowded compared to the grand bazaar. If you plan to visit, here are a few tips. Arrive early to avoid the crowd. Bring cash as some vendors might not accept cards and don't be afraid to haggle. It's part of the experience. Very 
they had a pair of shoes that uh, she's had for a long time and they needed some fixing. So we got this gentleman down here doing uh, shining shoes and doing shoe repair. So we brought him down here to get it, get it fixed up. days <laughs> when I was a soldier shining boots at my neighborhood barber shop I was able to get a shave and a haircut for less than eight dollars and that included tip this included the use of hot wax to rip the hair out of my nose and ears and off my face and a little flame to get the really fine hairs and I also made a friend Istanbul is a city where history culture and craftsmanship intertwine offering an unforgettable experience at every turn we hope you enjoyed this journey as much as we did don't forget to like comment, and subscribe for more adventures around the world. Until next time, safe travels. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next Sunday for more adventures in Turkey.